Welcome to VT SCADA by Trihedral Engineering. This video is for anyone installing VT SCADA for the first time. I'm going to walk you through the process of creating an application. We'll connect to hardware, simulated hardware, but you can use this anytime while learning. We're going to create and draw a tag, see a trend, trigger and respond to an alarm. And at every step, I'll show you where to look for all the extra details you're going to need. Did I say walk? I meant run. Be ready with the pause and rewind buttons. So you've just installed VT SCADA and it's asking you to create a new application. If you closed that dialog, reopen it this way from the VT SCADA Application Manager or VAM. Expand the menu. Select Add New Application. The quick option is perfect. So give it a good name and then select Next. Check that it will start and click Finish. That filled my main monitor, so I moved the window and made room to see the VAM again. For this demo, and only for this demo, we need a simulator. Add new application again. Choose Advanced. Find the v12 training simulator.change set file, which is in your VT SCADA examples folder. Select Next and Finish. There are tags and pages and widgets in there for you to explore, but for now, just minimize it to run in the background. Back to our first application. Okay, here's the most important lesson in this video. When in doubt, press F1. In this case, we're just looking at a screen, so the help opens to instructions for navigation. There's good stuff in there for you to read, but for now, just close that. Back to building. Always, the first thing to do is connect to a data source. You need to know what you're going to monitor and how to find it. I cannot tell you that. So maybe you're wondering, what can I monitor? The short answer is nearly anything that can be connected to a computer. For a list, browse the device drivers in the docs. Assuming that you know what to monitor, here's the process within VT SCADA. Open the tag browser from here. Right click on the top level and select New Child. VT SCADA asks what type. Organization is important, so start by creating a context tag. Context tags can be simple organizational tools or they can be extremely powerful time savers. Watch the video series under Parameterized Pages to learn more about these. Every tag must have a unique name. There are rules about names, and you can read those by pressing F1. After you do that, look for the topic Best Practices for Tags, but that's homework for later. Let's continue building our system. Name the tag Station 1. Give it an area property. Describe it as Primary Station. And that's all for now. It's too soon for any of the advanced features, so select OK. Now we need to tell VT SCADA how to communicate with the equipment in Station 1. Right click on Station 1. Select New Child. Expand the Ports group. Select TCP IP port as the type. This is the most common port, although you might use UDP for some drivers, or a serial port if you're connecting to a modem. I can't tell you which one to choose. You have to know your hardware. Name the port TCP connection. Describe it as local IP address. Open the connection tab. For this example, enter 127.0.0.1 as the TCP IP address. That's the loopback address to connect to your own computer. It will find the simulator that's running in that other application. For a real device, you would enter the computer name or IP address to reach the hardware or the website address if you were going to connect to JSON or MQTT data. For the port, enter 501. That's one digit different from a standard Modbus port number, just so that the simulator doesn't conflict with a real device if you had one. If you press F1, the topic that opens 
will tell you the standard port numbers for several common drivers. Everything else is an advanced feature that we don't need for standard devices. Select OK. Now VTSkater knows where to look for the hardware, but it doesn't know what protocol to use. For that, you need a driver. Right-click on Station 1 again to open the menu. Select New Child. Expand the driver's group. Take a moment to notice the options available. There's a built-in driver for a wide variety of protocols. Select Modbus Compatible Device. Name this tag Com Channel. Describe it as Simulator Connection. Open the Options tab. Make sure that you select the Com Channel option. Open Modbus TCP. Open the Serial tab. Note that there's no connection to a port. Every driver must be linked to a port in order to work. So select the Tag Browser button as shown, and a fresh copy of the Tag Browser opens on top of the first. Right click on the TCP IP port tag and then click Select. Now the driver is linked to the port. Select the OK button to close the driver configuration. Again, we don't need the advanced options today. Communication has been established, but you won't see that until you have an I.O. tag. So that's the next step. Right click on the COM channel to open the menu. We typically put I.O. tags under the driver tags. It's not a requirement, but it is a convenience. Select New Child. Select the I.O. and Calculations tag. Note that this can represent a wide variety of types. This one tag replaces a dozen from older versions of VTSCADA. For this example, I'm going to create an analog, but I'm allowed to change my mind later on. Give it a name and description. Open the I.O. tab. Enter for 0001 as the read address. Again, you need to know your hardware. If this tag were going to do control, I would provide a write address. And I can provide both read and write if I want to have visual feedback in my display screens of what I wrote. You can read about address formats for every driver type and also generic suffixes to define data types. All of that is in the help files. Open the scaling tab. For an input, the ratio between the unscaled and the scaled range is only to translate from the hardware values to human terms like inches or kilopascals or grams. For a notepad, this does set the allowed range. The simulator has a very unusual range for this tag. Change the unscaled process data max to 10,000. Set the expected range from 10 to 40. I wrote the simulator, so I know what to expect here. Let's open the Login tab. Login is enabled. That's good. The deadband value doesn't show, but it is preset to one quarter of 1% of the scaled range. Change that to 0.1. The deadband on Login is an important detail that you really do need to read about in the docs. For now, let's go on and set a simple alarm. Open the Alarms tab. This will only be a warning when the value is low. Set the Low Alarm Priority to Warning. Change the set point to 5. That's all we needed. Open the Display tab. All of the options are useful, but today we're only going to change the engineering units. Set that to IN for inches. Click OK to save and close. In the Tag Browser, you should see a value appear after the simulator starts. If not, you missed a step. Rewind. Next task is to build the user interface. Right-click on the Level to open the menu. Select the Draw command. The Tag Browser hides and the IDS Studio opens. You could also arrive here using this button in the toolbar, but drawing from the Tag Browser gives you a nice shortcut in the form of a pop-up widgets palette that's filtered to only the widgets that work with the tag you're drawing. 
Before selecting one, we need a clean space in which to work. Move the palette to the side, and the overview page is visible in the Idea Studio. This is a sample page that you can use to get started. When you want to create more pages, use the File menu. For now, we just need to clear away the sample information. Click once on something on the page. Use the keyboard to do a Control-A selection. The window that just opened on the right side, that's the Layers panel. It's very useful, but read about that later. Press the Delete key on your keyboard. You now have a clean page and the Layers panel closes. Turn your attention back to that palette that you moved to the side. Click once on the High Performance folder to open it. We're going to use a vertical analog bar and indicator to represent the level, so drag that widget to the page. As soon as you drop it on the page, the tag browser reopens, probably blocking your view, just in case you wanted to move on and draw something else. For now, close it. Let's adjust just one thing in the bar. Right-click to open the properties. Set the value range to 5 minutes. That will add a display of 5 minutes worth of history within this bar so I can see where the level has been over that time frame. Click OK. And now we can see the current value indicated by the arrow, the value over the last few minutes, and that light blue shade is the expected range that we configured in the tags scaling. Click the Show Operator View button at the top of the Idea Studio. There's the user interface that you created. The arrow is moving up and down the bar to indicate the current depth in the tank. Those question marks are flags for use during commissioning. They help you keep track of what you have tested and what you still need to test. Right click on the bar. See the check beside the word questionable? Click once on that to deselect it. The blinking question mark disappears. That was only there as a reminder to you to keep track of what you have tested and what still needs to be tested. We've tested this one so we can get rid of the reminder. And by the way, that gray band at the bottom of the bar, that shows the alarm set point. Let's trigger an alarm. Right click on the widget, then open alarm settings. By the way, be ready to mute your speakers. Change the set point to 15 and click OK. If the value is above that, you'll have to wait a moment or two until the low alarm triggers. When it does, right click the alarm indicator here to open a pop-up alarm page. There are enough options in this page to keep me talking for well over two hours during a introductory course. This might be a good time to press F1. But for now, just acknowledge the alarm. The simulator continues to run, so mute the sounds while you're here. Close the alarm page. Now let's see a trend to report on values that have been collected. Left click on the widget. The historical data viewer, or HDV, opens. The system has not been running for long, so change the time range to 10 minutes. There are lots of options here as well, so reading more will be well worth your time. There's also several topics in the help about reporting. OK, let's review what we've seen. You now know how to create an application, how to connect to hardware, how to represent tag values using widgets. There's still a lot left to learn, but you're well on your way to building supervisory control and data acquisition applications with VT SCADA. Good luck, and don't forget to press F1 whenever you need help.